first of all uh, Ethernet and IP networks which are prevalent in common business environments right uh, they are prone to these two fundamental attacks sniffing and spoofing of network traffic okay uh, what is it and uh, how one is different from another uh, the latter is basically very simple sniffing is just uh, listening to what happens either around you or what is passing through you through your machine right so just capturing network traffic that you uh, have access to uh, as a result of your position on the network or as a result of uh, actual spoofing okay and spoofing is uh, is, is ham somehow tampering with the protocol configurations on other hosts okay so let's say you want everyone uh, on your uh, local network believe that you are their default gateway okay and uh, you want your default gateway which uh, you share between you and all your neighbors on the segment believe that uh, you actually represent all your other neighbors on the network so in this <clears throat> situation if you achieve that this condition will let you uh, basically pass all the traffic in the network through you which is not uh, a very good idea when the, tra when the traffic amount is large uh, but uh, for a few hosts of most interest you can do that okay you cannot do it separately for separate protocols to to spoof and uh, and pass through the traffic you just you just do it for all the traffic that you uh, could possibly observe and in the end you have to deal with all that data uh, but uh, let's let's stay with this <clears throat> for some more so what is sniffing <clears throat> sniffing can be done either passively or actively uh, passive means that you are just uh, listening to what you get okay so as, as a as a normal legitimate uh, law-abiding member of the network you just uh, raise uh, an interface and uh, get everything you can okay so this is just uh, passively snooping on your own interface and not doing anything uh, <clears throat> even slightly malicious okay uh, and active sniffing means that you receive the traffic that is not intended to you directly okay so for that you have to either have access to some network equipment for example to a gateway or to a router or to a switch yeah and then uh, somehow mirror all the traffic or the portion of the traffic say at a specific port yeah on a switch to somewhere else and there run uh, some interception software some sniffer that will do all this traffic collection and uh, either analyze it <coughs> on the fly or just uh, save it for further processing into pcap files okay so we, we save captured traffic into cap or pcap files uh, and the, the bad thing about that is it uh, can be done virtually anywhere okay so all these different types of gateways firewalls switches uh, routers and uh, and all basic, basically any equipment that has an ethernet interface or uh, in fact any interface yeah any network interface can if uh, attacker has access to it can provide the attacker with the uh, capabilities to sniff everything okay so you can filter you can filter from that uh, many sniffers just allow you to, to to capture specific traffic just to pinpoint that types of protocols within uh, all the amount of traffic you get and save only this but uh, physically you have access to everything yeah of course uh, this this may sound uh, distressful right so uh, 
you just can make an experiment yourself. You just uh, take trace root, uh, the command we have discussed in the previous uh, section, right? And uh, you just take it and uh, put, I don't know, maybe google.com into the command line, right? Beside it. So you will have that uh, the trace to google.com lies through uh, a lot of, a lot of different hosts, yeah? So all of them are most probably gateways, uh, routers that connect you and the network where uh, Google servers reside in, okay? So you, you should understand clearly that at any point in this trace route output, uh, there could be a potential malicious implant or living attacker, living being who controls that equipment who can uh, intercept your traffic, okay? And this is relevant for any network communication in the internet. You should clearly understand that. Uh, and uh, what is done on the positive, on the, uh, on the defensive sorry, side uh, of uh, this problem? Of course, it is mitigated by crypto, okay? So everything we can do is uh, basically take two peers of network communication, agree on some form of encryption, exchange the keys in secret, yeah, and then encrypt that, right? So everything that is sent is first encrypted, and only in the end, only the legitimate recipient has access to the key material that allows him to decrypt the contents of the message, and vice versa. So crypto is all about that, mathematically proven models and tools that allow us to circumvent this inherent uh, insecurity of the media we are using. Okay, uh, there is basically no analogy uh, to that in the uh, real world as we knew it before the internet, right? So uh, we cannot just uh, sit in in the in, in the nice. Uh, um, corner where no one can see and hear us and uh, and do that and, and communicate uh, in an ephemeral way, right? So everything we pass through the internet is uh, reflected somewhere in the logs, maybe in the pickups that uh, malicious attackers or oppressive uh, state regimes collect on us. So all we can do is uh, use math, encrypt everything end to end. Uh, okay, and uh, what are various uh, qualities of spoofing as a process that uh, I want to emphasize right here in the beginning? So, uh, spoofing basically is just abusing this uh, stage of uh, the protocol, uh, the Ethernet protocol in this particular case, that is uh, aimed at... Uh, giving everyone on the network uh, the names, okay? So in the beginning, everyone has just these MAC addresses that are virtually unique for everyone, for every physical interface or virtual interface. So for every interface node on the network, we have like MAC addresses that are assumed to be unique. So uh, what does a host that wants to communicate to another host do? They just uh, send broadcasts, so-called broadcasts, yeah? And this segment in the network that is uh, having the same media, uh, it's called the broadcast domain, in other words, right? So they're just sending out, uh, I don't know, Alice, let's say Alice wants to establish a link with Bob, and she asks everyone, uh, are you Bob? So they're just sending the broadcast. Who is Bob? And Bob... Uh, Normally, yeah, he should uh, answer to her, Hey, Alice, I'm here. My name is Bob. And this is my MAC address. Let's proceed our communications. But there is no guarantee that he will do that first. Okay, so that he will be the first uh, the, that, that Alice will receive the answer from. Okay, and Alice, by design, will uh, believe the first answer she gets and disregard any other data that follows. Okay, so this is the main insecurity, the main vulnerability 
the flaw in the design of Ethernet that makes spoofing possible. Yeah, ARP spoofing in, in this particular case. So, uh, yeah, what, what happens then? Alice is sending everything to the attacker. Attacker is sending everything to Bob, uh, pretending he or she is Alice. Okay, and Bob responds, and, and this is basically called the man in the middle attack. Uh, everyone is spoofed and uh, the traffic is going through attacker's computer and is uh, effectively sniffed. And uh, if that's required by uh, attacker's uh, agenda, right, the traffic can be also tampered with. Okay, so some changes might um, occur as these uh, substitutes of addresses that I just described, for example. Okay, so as you might already see, if the strong crypto is used in this situation, uh, spoofing basically doesn't give uh, an attacker an advantage in terms of confidentiality, right? So he can uh, tamper with traffic and uh, cause a whole lot of trouble, but uh, he cannot sniff anything. So everything will pass through encrypted and unless he was there from the very beginning and somehow circumvented the security of cryptographic protocol used to establish this uh, trust, yeah, to exchange key material, generate session keys, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he won't be able to extract uh, the data, okay? To extract the clear text data encrypted in the communication. So this is... This is another point why using crypto. It protects us from the implication of spoofing as well. What we as attackers can do? First of all, we have to know all these tools that uh, allow us to do that. Here in this video, we will uh, shortly highlight most of them, most of good ones, I mean. And then we will uh, have a demo of uh, the best ones, right? The, the most uh, handy ones that uh, I personally recommend and that have a really good uh, uh, image in the industry, okay? So, uh, other ways to prevent all this stuff, spoofing and sniffing and so on, is to do port security configurations on switch ports, sign traffic and verify everything that comes to the server from the clients. And uh, TLS SSL is of course one of the most common means of protection against these kinds of attacks. Uh, but let's leave it for now because we are here for offensive reasons, right? So let's proceed with uh, getting familiar with the tools.